presenter. Uh, we'll also be talking about language and ideologies, and it's Felicity Ratway. And she'll be talking about preserving the ideology in one of their short stories by Bandera Hueca. Bandera Hueca. By Victor Hugo Robles. And it's actually not a short story. It's, a, it's, um, it's the first three chapters of the book. OK. <laughs> Uh, so as Dr. Fernet mentioned, um, I'll be talking about a translation of Bandera Hueca um, and preserving the ideology of the author of this text. Um, so the goal of my translation was to convey the ideology of the author faithfully. And um, the author is actually a gay man so he was very involved in the LGBT movement in Chile. And so I wanted to be sure that the text um, showed either a neutral or positive um, attitude toward uh, the queer community, because that would be representative of the author's views that he showed in the source text. Um, and so I focused mainly on the vocabulary that the author used and how it reflected his vocabulary. Although um, I also noticed other ways that the ideology was reflected in the text, um, including metaphors and intertextual references. Um, and to decide how to translate the vocabulary used, I um, used a corpus-based study. So I evaluated um, the connotative and denotative meaning of the expressions used to refer to the LGBT community. And I tried to select terms that closely matched the connotations present in the source text. Um, <coughs> so why did I choose this text? Well, first, um, it, I thought it was of historical importance because um, the Pinochet regime, uh, which is this book explores um, the LGBT movement and how it um, <coughs> survived the Pinochet regime and how queer people were treated under that regime. Um, so it's of historical importance because it discusses human rights violations and also um, it, uh, the LGBT movement provoked rapid social change in uh, both Ch uh, Chile, Argentina, and Uruguay. Um, so within a matter of two or three decades, we went from you could be put to death for being gay to gay marriage. Um, and this content, um, I actually did a research paper in my undergrad, and I used this as one of my sources, but there's not a lot of content about um, queer people and how they were treated under these dictatorships in the Southern Cone. So um, translating a book like this would uh, provide more content to English readers. Um, and then also um, another important aspect is the visibility of the queer community because um, although they were victims of the regime, <coughs> they are often not discussed. Um, the author, um, Victor Robles, actually discusses this um, and he says they are not even registered in historical records that talk about the Pinochet regime. So um, even though they are, they were um, victims, they are often ignored in history. Um, so my research questions were basically, how is ideology conveyed through choice of vocabulary? So how does the words, how do the words and expressions that the author uses uh, reflect his ideology? How can queer vocabulary be translated without altering the ideology? So how do I choose expressions <coughs> in English uh, that have the same connotations? Uh, what are the differences between the connotations in Spanish and English? So even if there is an equivalent like homosexual for homosexual, what is the difference in connotative meaning between Spanish and English? And um, finally, how else does the author express ideology? So like I mentioned, I also looked briefly at um, metaphors and intertextual references. 
So the two corpora that I used to do my research were COCA for English because it's a corpus of contemporary American English. So I, because I was translating into American English, I wanted to focus only on um, American speech because uh, the terms, especially pejorative terms, are very different in uh, English from the UK, from Australia, than they are in American English. Um, and then corpus for Spanish, um, which corpus is actually Spanish from all over the world, but I specifically looked up um, in the subcorpus of Chilean Spanish um, because the original text was from Chile and there were some words that were specific to Chile. Um, and then I basically looked at the expressions that were used in the source text and I determined um, their connotative meaning and then <coughs> I looked uh, by looking at the context. So I looked at the most recent entries and um, I read the context that appeared in the corpus and determined whether it was positive, neutral, or negative. And then I did the same for um, terms or expressions in English um, and I also uh, looked at the context to find matching terms and expressions that I could use. Um, so I gave examples there, um, you can read them, uh, of what positive, neutral, and negative context would look like. Um, so positive context um, would clearly show that the speaker or writer um, had positive views in relation to the LGBT community. Neutral the views of the author could not be determined, so it was mostly um, academic um, or sometimes news articles. And then negative, um, clearly a negative opinion. Um, and then uh, translating the vocabulary. So the original text, as I mentioned before, had mostly a neutral or positive connotation, which reflected the views of the author. Um, and there were language differences, so I found for many of the terms, um, the easiest go-to um, translation had a different um, connotative meaning, so I had to find an equivalent expression that um, more closely matched the meaning. Um, and then, <coughs> some of this is cut off, but... Um, one of the most interesting things um, as I was doing my research, um, I found that um, even the dictionary definition of a word, so even two words that might have the same dictionary definition, um, they can have um, different meanings because of their connotation. But I also found that the dictionary in some cases does reflect uh, the connotation of the word. Now, dictionaries generally are supposed to be neutral, but um, in many cases, uh, they uh, differentiate, they show the views of the author um, in the differences between how they approached homosexuality and heterosexuality. So dictionaries, for example, might describe homosexuality as an instinct or tendency while they would describe heterosexuality as a feeling or behavior. So that kind of reveals the ideology of um, the author or publisher of the dictionary. Um, and dictionaries may also reflect uh, the views of society as a whole, so not just the individual author. Um, so this dictionary from uh, Diccionario de Uso del Español uh, from 1966 defined homosexuality as the vice of the homosexuals. Mm -hmm. So clearly that reflected the attitudes of society in the 1960s. Um, and if you looked at a dictionary that said that now, that would seem very biased. Um, and then I also looked at pejorative language because this book provides many personal accounts um, and the speakers would uh, recount <coughs> stories of being harassed and um, being called these pejorative names. 
So I had to try to find equivalent expressions um, in English because many, um, for example, mariposa literally it means butterfly, but we don't use that as an insult in English for queer people. So I had to find equivalent expressions that would be used in English, and often um, the word would have a, a double meaning. Like, for example, the word sissy has kind of a double meaning of someone who is weak, but it can also be used for gay people. So um, if there was a double meaning in the source text, I tried to find a word in English that also had a similar double meaning. Um, and so here are uh, the translations I selected. Um, and as you can see, some of them I did not uh, use, like the literal translation. So homosexual, I didn't use homosexual because it has a more negative connotation in English. I used gay instead. But some of them I was able to translate more literally. So lesbian, no lesbian. Um, and then uh, the other translation issues I looked at, um, metaphors. Uh, so the title of the book, Bandera Wega, um, the author actually in uh, Congress um, presented a flag with a hole in the center um, representing the empty space uh, occupied by marginalized groups in society. Um, and so I wanted to choose a word for wake up, which can mean, um, it can mean empty or hollow, or um, I wanted to choose something that conveyed the double meaning of both the hole and the flag, and also this empty space. So that's why I chose hollow. Um, and then El Che de los Gays, um, the Victor Hugo described himself um, as the Che of the Gays because he was a leader in the LGBT movement. Um, and then finally, intertextual references. Um, this was a difficult problem to deal with, and Dr. Boris and I discussed it many times. But um, the author actually attributed this quote the love that dare not speak its name to Oscar Wilde. And the original author of this quote was Oscar Wilde's lover, um, Sir Alfred Douglas. And um, in order to, I wanted to preserve the attribution to Oscar Wilde because it referred to um, Oscar Wilde's elaborated description of the meaning of this quote. Um, when he was tried for homosexuality, which was a crime uh, at that time. But I also wanted to give credit to the original author of the quote. So um, I cited it as, um, I said, uh, Sir Alfred Douglas uh, as cited by Oscar Wilde. So. And then finally, implications for future research. Um, I thought that this research could be relevant for evaluating vocabulary and other texts. So a similar corpus-based study could be used to determine whether a text is neutral or biased, to determine whether um, expressions that are used are appropriate for the register. So if an expression or word has a strong negative or positive connotation, it may not be appropriate for an academic text. Um, and then also determining which expressions are appropriate to use in other translations. Um, and then I, it could also be used to compare queer vocabulary across languages. So I looked at Spanish, but what about Italian or Japanese or French? Um, would uh, the different languages use different vocabulary? And what would the connotations look like in different languages? Um, and then finally, uh, I thought because I noticed these other um, metaphors and intertextual references, those could be explored in more depth. Right. <laughs> Finding words with double means because I've found that 
looking into what makes a word taboo is often difficult, if not entirely impossible. So how did you find uh, words that had that same connotation, for lack of a better term? A lot of times it was very difficult because um, I actually found fewer words in English than I did in Spanish. Um, and sometimes I had to use the same word twice. But um, I, I basically, I did a lot of research. I, I researched the, um, the histories of the words. So um, I looked uh, not just at like the current use, but like why people started using that word. <coughs> invite you for a cup of tea or coffee and we'll come back in about maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah. So we are a little bit earlier, so I have more time, shall we? So let's meet here in 10 minutes. Uh, 25 to...